gospel, peace be to all. Faith and 
incline with fervor unto thee, since thou art good, O our Savior, and art entreated by thine own tender love, and by thy mother's prayers, and the prayers of all that ever pleased thee well. Grant them that glorify and worship thee in two natures, with faith and love, to bring the ear to thee as a fitting and acceptable offering. So we find that um, something very different has just happened from that first prayer that we heard, because we're used to the part of it where we look forward and anticipate and pray for God's blessing. Uh, but here, we at the end hear some, uh, some very different words, that with faith and love, that we to bring the year to you as a fitting and acceptable offering. You know, we humans tend to um, forget or not recognize at all just how remarkable we are as creatures, just how marvelously we are made. Because if our God is the creator of everything, we as beings in His image and likeness are contributors to that, that we also are to be creators. And what do we create? Well, we get to create in a very unique fashion an offering something be, to be delivered back to God that only each one of us can do. You know, it's one of the sad things of our day that we have to go so out of our way to try and prove, just like Adam did in the beginning. You know, um, Adam created and fashioned after the image and likeness of God as the first man, just like us, also was very easily distracted from that. He didn't believe it. He didn't get it. So when the devil suggested that um, God somehow didn't want him to eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he would become like God, there was something very, very sinister in that kind of a message. Very tricky. You know, um, because we are like God. Adam was like God. So there was no uh, need for Adam to go anywhere or do anything. Hence that earlier word that I said about us returning to find out that everything we thought we were chasing after and needing was here all the time. Because there's ultimately only one purpose that we're here, and there's only one journey that we're on, and there's only one destination, and that is the kingdom of heaven. That is the glory and wonder of being in Christ. And so, what we get to do with the year, if we take it seriously at all, is to look and say, how in my life, how in my circumstances, how in the things and with the people that are all around me, do I get to offer this back to God as best as I can improve God? For a while we can't improve on, on the, the wonder of what God has created. He makes us to be um, co-creators with Him of what will flow forward from here. That in our cooperation, that in our synergy with God, that in our doing what we can to not thwart His intention, we add something quite beautiful to the whole mix. And hence the sadness, because we think that there are so many things in so many places that, that it's all so complex and complicated as to what our journey is about, to what our purpose is in life. But there's really only one purpose and only one way that we will achieve that end. And it is to strive and to struggle to devote ourselves totally and completely to the God who made us. So all there is, you know, we are people who believe that creation is from nothing. That, that God in His essence, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, um, is existing with no beginning. But everything else comes into a beginning. Everything else has a beginning. From that point, we are called to do what we would to unite all of this to the God who made it all. We were the source of the fall from that grace. We were the source of the mistake. We were the source of believing the lie. We were the source of being distracted by so many things. And if we can say that there, there, there is something of particular about our day and age, it is that we have really mastered distraction. How many television stations can a person watch at a time? But we get our packages. 200 stations aren't enough, or maybe 500. I don't know what the most you can get is. And if you get on, on, on uh, you know, onto the uh, satellites and things like that, you can, you can almost go into infinity with the ways of being distracted just on a television. 
And then we all, those of us who have um, made use of the internet, you can go anywhere. We can be, again, distracted to think that maybe there's some place there with an answer to my life. Maybe there are some people, and we even put ourselves out there in that fashion. What a strange thing it is that we, we look at that social media. And, and again, I know that, that many of you participate. I have a, a Facebook account, but I don't use it. Partly because I just, like, I guess I'm a little too lazy to be able to keep it kind of orderly. But when I look at some of what shows up sometimes on these things, do I really need to see a thumbs up or a wow or a wonderful or a that's beautiful uh, about things that I might put out there? Something very maybe personal, known perhaps and appreciated maybe only by me and yet, do we do that or not? Do we want to have people looking at us and lifting us up and telling us how great we are? And I know that, you know, as far as a social media, a way of staying in touch with friends, um, that is not all that we might say is going on, but to a large degree, that's what we're up to. Because who is my Facebook page about? It's all about me. Me, me. I have no problem thinking about me, paying attention to me, catering to me, wanting my needs and desires to be fulfilled. And that is the total opposite, even in a way that transcends whatever words I might say about it, to how we are created. Because we're made like God. But as long as I'm putting together, you know, my Facebook page, and wanting to have a good mission statement in my life, and, and wanting to be able to somehow uh, present myself to the world as something special, it's very much an acknowledgement that I don't get how special I am. Simply by being. You know, God, when asked by Moses who he is, I am that I am. And this whole business of being is, is the most uh, challenging uh, enterprise we will ever be part of. And this is where it all goes. That when we begin, and that's why we have in such a marvelous way as Orthodox Christians do, we've got saints everywhere. You know, it's not like we have a boring kind of, of thing to be um, uh, participating in. We look and we see every day there are stories of human beings who are little Christs, who have become by the grace of God what God is by nature, um, and show us what it looked like. And we get to look at their um, site, let's say. We get to look at their page, and we see remarkable, unbelievable stories that all point to God. Because all of them would be said to have attained, or uh, if we can speak of it that way, such a degree of humility that they saw themselves not at all, they weren't even looking there, because they were blinded by looking at the glory of God. So as the new year begins, the best thing that we can do with it is try to contribute day by day to our consciousness, our awareness, our souls, you know, our spirits looking to God and going to God. And that's not easy because, again, most of us are pretty good people and pretty comfortable. I know I have to confess increasingly, man, am I comfortable. Boy, do I enjoy my life the way it is. It's, it's easy. It's, it's with, again, I, I know I've said it from here not that often, but I say it almost in every conversation I have with people. How could heaven possibly be better than this? I'm standing in a, a, a warm, um, dry, secure shelter. Right there, I have it better than, than most of, of humanity has experienced throughout human history. And on the walls, I get to be present with the saints. People who are presented in paint and form to, to meditate on and to wonder at and to be with and to celebrate with and to live glory to God with. And they're all here with me. And I get to be here with you. With you miracles. With you beings that I have no, idea, I have no idea at all how you got here, what you're made of, how you're put together, how you function. I don't get that at all. And yet, most of the time, I, I treat you, ah, I take you for granted. You know, just like I take my car for granted, I took a ride down to Florida 
What an amazing thing! You climb in a, 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 a chunk of metal, you know, and, and you turn a key, vroom, and then air and, and fuel somehow mix together to crank up energy, and whoo, you drive hundreds and hundreds of miles. What an amazing thing! And you know what I was paying attention to? I was telling some people the other day the uh, condensation on my windshield. Because early in the morning, I started coming back early in the morning, you know, you get that little bit of from the fog and from the moisture, it just starts to build up. And if you don't have a car that can sense the moisture, well then, you got two choices. One is you turn it on low, but it's not really low enough. Or, uh, you know, you, you have to just keep twiddling it back and forth. And it can then get a little condensation, and then I can see all the bugs and the mosquitoes on my windshield. And it's really easy for me sitting in my miracle of a car, driving down the road at, at you know, 60, I've got the speed limit now, um, at, at 60 miles an hour, maybe 70 with the speed limit is that, really hurtling along with all my road base. You know, and it doesn't amaze me because when I cleaned that windshield, I must have had something on the rack. You know? And, and the rack must have, now the moisture just gets in that one spot. Yeah, and it's kind of squeaky, and, and maybe I should have changed my windshield wipers because you know now I'm not sure that it's not scratching the glass instead of just uh, you know um, you know moving the, the water around, and I miss it, and that's what we do, my friends. We miss it, and so we come to the beginning of a new year and are encouraged continually uh, in the church to wake up, to be reminded of who and what we are. And to remember that we are not simply spectators, we are here to live life. And that is to live the will of God. Because what unfolds for us uh, in any moment is exactly the will of God. How did it get here? I don't know. Yo, what's its purpose? Well, it's for me to take it and offer it back. And we do that. We come to the divine liturgy, you know, and, and again, another thing that we take for granted and don't understand and think that it's weird and wonder if we're thinking at all about why we do these things. Well, we come here to offer things to God and to give thanks primarily, to thank God just for being. So let us pray that in the, the year that is, is opening up for us, that this exhortation in the, in the hymn, um, that we uh, return this to God, that we, as the words say, what does it say? That we, we bring the ear to Him as a fitting and acceptable offering. That we realize and come to realize just how simple that is and how hard it is to do. Because we've got to stop looking at ourselves so much and start looking at God. Let us pray that God will give us the grace and the, the energy and the will to do just that. Amen.